الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وعملا يا رب العالمين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has gathered us here today to listen to the words of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah azza wa jal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this gathering of ours a means of success for us in this life and in the life hereafter insha'Allah ta'ala. So we are going to continue insha'Allah with Kitabul Adab, the book of etiquettes. And previously last week we spoke about the chapter of isti'dhan which is seeking permission to enter one's home or seeking permission to enter one's, uh, you can say, private quarter. Now, inshallah, <clears throat> the next chapter that Imam Nawi rahimahullah brings after this, after the chapter of isti'dhan, is Babu istihbabi tashmeet al-atisi idha hamid Allah ta'ala wa karahati tashmeetihi idha lam yahmad Allah ta'ala وَبَيَانِ آدَابِ التَّشْمِيتِ وَالْعُطَاسِ وَالتَّثَاؤُبِ The chapter in regards to the preferability of something called tashmeet, which I will explain. Doing tashmeet of the one who sneezes when he praises Allah and the dislike of doing tashmeet if he does not praise Allah and clarifying the etiquettes of tashmeet as well as sneezing, as well as yawning. Okay, so many things are going to be discussed in this chapter. The first hadith that Imam Nawi rahimahullah brings is the hadith of Abu Hurairah. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, inna allaha yuhibbu al-utas wa yakrahu al-tathaub. Fa'idha atasa ahadukum wa hamida allaha ta'ala, kana haqqan ala kulli muslimin sami'ahu an yaqula lahu, يرحمك الله وأما التثاؤب فإنما هو من الشيطان فإذا تثاؤب أحدكم فليرده ما استطاع فإن أحدكم إذا تثاؤب ضحك منه الشيطان رواه البخاري أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه he mentions that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said verily Allah عز وجل he loves عطاس which means he loves sneezing literally Allah Azza wa Jal loves the action of sneezing and he dislikes yawning meaning he dislikes it when people yawn so Allah loves it when people sneeze and Allah dislikes it when people yawn فَإِذَا عَطَسَ أَحَدُكُمْ so if one of you sneezes وَحَمِدَ الله, and he praises Allah meaning he says Alhamdulillah كَانَ حَقًّا عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ It is a right upon every Muslim who hears him to say to him, يَرْحَمُكَ اللَّهِ Which means, may Allah have mercy on you. And then he says, وَأَمَّا التَّثَاؤُبْ As for yawning, فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ It is verily from shaitan. So if one of you yawns, فَلْيَرُدَّهُ مَسْتَطَاعَ Let him withhold his yawn as much as he can. فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ إِذَا تَثَاءَبَ Because verily when one of you yawns, shaitan he laughs at him. ضَحِكَ مِنْهُ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaitan he laughs at him. Now let's look at this hadith. So a few things have been mentioned in this hadith. The first thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned was إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْعُطَاسِ Allah azza wa jal, he loves it when people sneeze. Now one may ask why. There are a few reasons that the muhaddithin have given. Number one, the muhaddithin they mention that al-utasu yadullu ala al-khiffati wal-nashat yeah which means that sneezing it is a sign of the mind becoming you can say active because when you sneeze let's say when you're tired and you sneeze it, the, the, the burden on your mind it becomes slightly less 
right? When you sneeze, you feel a bit fresh after it. It's like you've got a new energy, mentally speaking. Okay? So because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praised when one of you sneezes. So when we sneeze, we say Alhamdulillah. Because why? Allah Azza wa Jal has given us this newfound energy, this newfound activism, right? In our minds. And because of this khifa, because of the burden in our minds becoming less due to the sneezing, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Another reason that the muhaddithin have given is because sneezing is an opportunity to praise Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal loving the action of sneezing is basically due to the fact that when we sneeze, we automatically say what? Alhamdulillah, right? In fact, there is a hadith that mentions that when Allah Azza wa Jal he created Adam alayhi salam, atasa Adam. Adam alayhi salam, he sneezed. And it was part of the fitrah of Adam alayhi salam, the natural disposition, the, the, the nature of humans is to recognize Allah, right? So it was part of the natural fitrah, the natural disposition of Adam alayhi salam to say alhamdulillah, right? So it is part of our, you can say, natural reaction that when we say automatically, a believer usually says Alhamdulillah, right? So this is why Allah Azza wa Jal, He loves this action of sneezing. وَيَكْرَهُ التَّهْفَاءُبْ Allah Azza wa Jal dislikes it when one of us sneezes, uh, when one of us yawns. Now one may ask, but yawning is a natural thing. Does that mean it is haram to yawn? Yeah, if it's haram to yawn, we're all in big trouble. Okay, because we all yawn every day. Yeah, especially when we're tired after Isha, when Hadith Dars is going on. Uh, everyone's yawning. Yeah, when can we go home and sleep? So, yawning is disliked by Allah. Why? The ulama, they mention that because yawning is a sign of laz- being lazy, right? Laziness. It is a reflection of laziness. So as a result, Allah Azza wa Jal, by, by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi saying that he dislikes yawning, it doesn't mean that it is disliked as in you shouldn't yawn. We're not saying that. We're saying that Allah Azza wa Jal dislikes what yawning can lead to. Yeah, meaning the laziness that is accompanied with yawning. Because yawning, when someone yawns, like if you're talking to someone, you're having a really long discussion, and then that person yawns, what happens? It comes across a bit rude, right? Like when a teacher, for example, he's teaching a class, and then uh, someone's yawning, and what does a teacher normally say? Sorry, am I boring you? Yeah, am I boring you? Right? Are you finding this discussion boring? Is that why you're yawning, right? So even when it comes to social etiquette, it is something which is frowned upon if you yawn openly in front of someone. Which is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he told us after mentioning the reality of sneezing and yawning, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned two etiquettes. One with regards to sneezing and one with regards to yawning. The one with sneezing, we all know this, that when a person says Alhamdulillah, whoever hears him, it is a right upon him. To say, Yarhamukallah. Okay? So doing Tashmeet, Tashmeet means to say, Yarhamukallah. Okay? Tashmeetul Atis. In Arabic, we say, Tashmeetul Atis means to say, Yarhamukallah, when someone says, Alhamdulillah, after, uh, after sneezing. Okay? And then the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَأَمَّا التَّثَاؤُبْ فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ That yawning is from shaitan, meaning shaitan uses that to instill laziness inside of you. And as a result, the Messenger of Allah mentioned a very important social etiquette. And that is when one of you yawns in public, in front of people, then فَلْيَرُدَّهُ مَسْتَطَاعَ Let him withhold that yawning as much as he can. What does that mean? That means don't just yawn in someone's face without covering your face. And, ah, like that. You know, you yawn in someone's face. Okay? فَلْيَرُدَّهُ مَسْتَطَاعَ Means that you hide your yawn with your mouth. And you don't make it apparent. You hide it as much as possible. You withhold, try to withhold the yawn, meaning try to prevent yourself from yawning as much as possible if you can. No one start yawning now, yeah? That's just going to take the mic. <laughs> right? So try to withhold your yawning as much as you can. And then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that the reason behind this, the reason why you shouldn't yawn openly um, without hiding without covering your mouth is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ إِذَا تَثَاءَبَ ضَحِكَ مِنْهُ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaytan laughs at this individual when he yawns. Okay? And as a result, you try to hide your yawning 
because in actual fact you are hiding the laziness that may that you may be feeling at that present moment okay what we learn from this hadith is not just these etiquettes we learn something much more deeper and that is if you look at the principle that this hadith is based upon allah azza wa jal in other words loves it when his when his slaves when the believers are active yeah allah likes activism allah does not like laziness and this should be the attitude of a believer. That a believer is always active. Which is why when you look in the Sharia, when you study the Sharia deeply, you will see that many of the rulings of Islam are based on this premise. The premise of the fact that Allah Azza wa likes it when we are active. Allah does not like it when we are lazy. Right? For example, eating. Yeah, we've, we've talked about the etiquettes of eating a long time ago. A few months ago, we talked about the etiquettes of eating. And we mentioned one of the hadith that we talked about was how a person should fill, his stomach should be divided into three parts. Yeah? A third for water, a third for food, and a third for? Not desserts, don't say dessert, yeah? For air, right? To breathe. Some people, they just have one big, you know, <laughs> no, no, three, no three parts. One big, mashallah, for everything. Everything in one, yeah? But there's no space for air. That's the reality, unfortunately. So, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us these etiquettes of eating. Yeah? That when you recite the dua, you'll find that the little that you have, the little uh, amount of food that you have in front of you will, be, will suffice you. If you remember the hadith, that one of the hadith that we talked about, that Imam Nawi talks about in, in the chapter of eating is that the, the food of two people is enough for four people. The food of one person is enough for two people. What does that mean? That if you abide by the etiquettes, the prophetic etiquettes that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us, then there's going to be barakah in that food, which means that you're not going to overeat. Overeating is a big problem nowadays, right? Where we eat, we don't know why we're eating. We're just eating. We don't know why we're eating. We don't know why we're so hungry. Many of the times, the reason is because we don't even recite the du'a before eating. So how can we expect barakah in that food? And not only that, as the hadith mentioned, that if you don't recite the dua, then shaitan is eating with you. You're not only filling your own stomach, you're filling the stomach of shaitan. And the shaitan's stomach is very big. Okay? He doesn't get full up. Okay? He's going to eat and eat and eat. And the more you feed shaitan, the more healthier shaitan is going to get, the more powerful shaitan is going to get. Right? Which is why when we abide by these etiquettes and we recite these duas, it is going to be a means of barakah in our food, which means that we eat less. Now, why did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give us these guidelines with regards to eating? Because when you eat too much, what's going to happen? You're going to feel lazy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like laziness. Allah likes that his slaves are active. Right? Which is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله تعالى من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل, وفي كل خير The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, A strong believer, physically strong we mean, yeah? A strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a weak believer. Yeah? When you are a strong believer, i.e. you are healthy, you are active, you look after your, your health, and as a result you are active in everything that you do, then that is beloved to Allah. Why? Because you're not going to be lazy when it comes to ibadah. Right? You're not going to be lazy when it comes to ibadah. Rather, you are going to be active. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives this description in the Quran. Allah says, Sari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum. Allah says, race to the forgiveness of your Lord. Now, why does Allah say race? Allah gives us an imagery in our mind that it's like a race. It's like you're running towards the forgiveness of Allah. In another verse, Allah says, Sabiqu. Yeah, which literally means compete with one another, race with one another, and compete to gain the forgiveness of your Lord. Right? So Allah Azza wa Jal, He likes activism. He likes it when we are active and not lazy. Which is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْعُطَاسِ وَيَكْرَهُ التثاؤب. Moving on to the next hadith. Again narrated from Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh. عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ إِذَا عَطَسَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَقُلْ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَلْيَقُلْ لَهُ أَخُوهُ أَوْ صَاحِبُهُ يَرْحَمُكَ اللَّهِ فَإِذَا قَالَ لَهُ يَرْحَمُكَ اللَّهِ فَلْيَقُلْ يَهْدِيكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيُصْلِحُ بَالَكُمْ 
Rawahul Bukhari. This is a known etiquette. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, When one of you sneezes, let him say Alhamdulillah. And if his brother or companion hears him, let him say Yarhamuk Allah. And if he says to the one who sneezed, Yarhamuk Allah, let the one who sneezed respond to him by saying, Yahdikum Allah wa yuslihu balakum. Everyone understand this? Which means, Allah, may Allah guide you and rectify your affairs. So Alhamdulillah means all praises you to Allah. Yarhamuk Allah is, may Allah have mercy on you. Yahdikum Allah wa yuslihu balakum. May Allah guide you and rectify all your affairs. Yes, yeah, so it's a beautiful dua that is taking place. So when someone sneezes, what should you say, everyone? Alhamdulillah. Now, if someone hears you, what should they say? Ya Rahamukallah. And the person who sneezes, if he hears that person say, Ya Rahamukallah, what should he respond? Ya Hadikumullahu wa Yuslihu Balakum. Okay. Next hadith an Abi Musa radiallahu anhu. Ya'ni Abu Musa al Ash'ari radiallahu anhu kal. سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا عطس أحدكم فحمد الله فشمتوه فإن لم يحمد الله فلا تشمتوه رواه مسلم أبو موسى رضي الله عنه he says that I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying when one of you sneezes then he should and, he, and if he praises Allah so when one of you sneezes and he praises Allah meaning he says Alhamdulillah then and you hear him you should say, Yarhamuk Allah. And if he does not praise Allah, then you should not say, Yarhamuk Allah. Okay? Now, we're going to come to this, because we're going to go to the next hadith, which is uh, related to this. وَعَنْ أَنَسٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ عَطَسَ رَجُلَانِ عِنْدَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَشَمَّتَ أَحَدَهُمَا وَلَمْ يُشَمِّتِ الْآخَرِ فَقَالَ الَّذِي لَمْ يُشَمِّتْهُ عطس فلان فشمته وعطست فلم تشمتني فقال هذا حمد الله وإنك لم تحمد الله وإنك لم تحمد الله متفق عليه. So now what happens? These two hadiths are talking about what happens if someone sneezes and he does not say الحمد لله. So the summary of both the hadith is that if someone sneezes. And he does not say Alhamdulillah, or you didn't hear him say Alhamdulillah, then you should not say Yarhamukallah. Right? The second hadith is mentioning that two people sneezed in front of the Prophet. The Prophet said to one of them, Yarhamukallah, and he did not say to the other, Yarhamukallah. So the person who he, he didn't say Yarhamukallah to, he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you made dua for him, you didn't make dua for me. Yeah, look at the eagerness of the companions. Yeah, he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you said, Yarhamukallah to him. Why didn't you say, Yarhamukallah to me? Did I do something wrong? The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, as for him, he praised Allah. He sneezed and said, Alhamdulillah. As for you, you didn't say, Alhamdulillah, which is why I didn't say, Yarhamukallah. So we learn from this, that you only say, Yarhamukallah, if someone says, Alhamdulillah, and you hear him. Now, one may ask, what if, you, he could have said Alhamdulillah, right? There is a possibility, but you didn't hear him. What happens in that case? Even in that case, you will not say Yarhamukallah. However, there is one um, narration uh, wherein one of the, the companions, uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, uh, one person he sneezed in front of him, but he didn't hear him say Alhamdulillah, okay? So it was Makhul, Makhul who was one of the students of the companions. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he heard him sneeze, but he didn't hear him say Alhamdulillah. So what Ibn Umar did, he went to him and he said, Yarhamukallah in kunta hamittallah. He said that, may Allah have mercy on you if you praised Allah. Meaning if you said Alhamdulillah, then Yarhamukallah. Which in, if you take the, 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 the wider meaning, if you did not praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this dua is not for you, basically. Okay? So this is the summary of the discussion. The, the, the main thing that we must understand is we must abide by this etiquette. That when we sneeze, we should try to say Alhamdulillah loudly, especially if you're in a majlis, you know, where there's other Muslims, 
uh, amongst your family members, etc. You should try to say it loudly, Alhamdulillah, so that you give an opportunity for people to make dua for you. Right? It's beautiful, isn't it? As in, you, by you saying Alhamdulillah, you are giving everyone the opportunity to make dua of rahmah for you. How beautiful is that? And you are actually giving them an opportunity that you make dua for them as well. Because when they say, Allah, you are going to make dua for them as well. Yahdikumullahu wa yuslihu balakum. Right? And you can see this common theme now when it comes to etiquettes. We talked about this in, in Babu Salam, the chapter of the greetings of Salam. That it is all about making dua for one another. And we can find this principle, we can derive this principle actually from Kitabul Adab. And that principle that we're learning is that love is based upon making dua for one another. Right? So the ulama, they mentioned that this, this uh, etiquette of uh, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rahamukallah, Ya Hadikumullah, they say that it nourishes love for one another because you are making dua for one another. Similarly, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he talked about one of the ways to instill love for one another is the greetings of salam. Why? Because when you say assalamu alaykum, you are making dua for the person that you have just met. And the person is going to respond with the same greetings. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Again, he's making dua for you. So you can see that embedded within the chapter of etiquettes is this concept of making dua for one another. And what that will do is instill love in the hearts of the believers. Moving on, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا عطس وضع يده أو ثوبه على فيه وخفض أو غض بها صوته شك الراوي رواه أبو داود والترمذي أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم when he would sneeze he would place his hand on his mouth or he would place a cloth okay, on his mouth and he would sneeze into that cloth or into his hand. Okay? And then what, that's, that's the first thing he used to do. The second thing he used to do is He used to lower his sound. Okay? Now this is going to be a bit funny. He used to lower his sound. Meaning, you know some people that have a very loud sneeze. Okay, I know a few people like this. Very, very loud sneeze, mashallah. Okay, it's like an earthquake. Yeah, it's like a storm that has just come, <laughs> subhanallah. <laughs> Anyone who's sleeping is going to wake them up. You know, I've got a cat at home. Yeah, I've got a cat at home. So I'm not going to mention which family member it is. But one of my family members has got a very loud sneeze, mashallah. Yeah, so when, when, when he sneezes, the cat's ears goes up like this. It's like, inna lillahi wa inna They get scared. <laughs> Now what shall I do? <laughs> right? So the, the, the sunnah is that when we sneeze, okay, look, everyone has different, uh, you can say, levels of sneezing in terms of the power okay, of your sneeze and how loud your sneeze is. You can only control it so much, but your responsibility is to try to lower your sound as much as possible, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. So instead of screaming, and really, because sometimes we just want to get it all out, right? So we think that the louder the sneeze is, the more that's going to come out of our nose and our mouth, okay? But the actual sunnah is that we lower our voice as much as possible. We try to, like when you cover your mouth, for example, and you have a tissue, you have a cloth, and you cover your mouth and you sneeze into that, that will automatically lower the sound, right? So we can see that actually these two sentences are linked. That the Messenger of Allah placing his hand or a cloth over his mouth when he sneezed and the Messenger of Allah lowering his voice, they're linked. Because by covering your hand, or sorry, by covering your mouth with your hand or with a cloth, that will automatically lower the sound. Okay? Whereas when you don't cover your mouth and you sneeze everywhere, not only are you spreading germs, but you're also disturbing everyone around you. And it goes against social etiquettes. This is the most important thing. It goes against social etiquettes. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us a very, very important etiquette. Whenever we sneeze, you cover your mouth. This is stuff we teach our kids. But unfortunately, even unfortunately, adults don't abide by these etiquettes. Yeah? When you sneeze, you cover your mouth. And the second thing is you try to lower the sound as much as, as possible. And then you have all of the other etiquettes that we have covered about saying alhamdulillah and so on and so forth. Moving on. An Abi Musa رضي الله عنه قال كان اليهود 
يتعاطسون عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يرجون أن يقول لهم يرحمكم الله فيقول يهديكم الله ويصلح بالكم رواه أبو داود والترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح أبو موسى رضي الله عنه يسيز that the Jews at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to pretend to sneeze in front of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yata'atasun means that they used to pretend to sneeze. Yeah? So they used to pretend to sneeze in front of, so they used to go, they used to go achu, achu, in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did they used to do that? They had this hope that maybe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, Yarhamukallah to them. Right? But obviously they're Jews, right? So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, never used to say Yarhamukallah to them. Rather, he, may, he, he said something else. He said, Yahdikumullah. May Allah guide you and may He rectify your affairs. And the reason why they did this, the ulama, they go into quite a lot of detail under this hadith. They talk about why did the Jews try to seek the dua of Rasulullah For many reasons. One of them is, the ulama mentioned, the Jews at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you had uh, the Banu Nadir, you had the Banu Qaynuqa' and you had the Banu Quraidha, the three tribes of Jews that were living in Medina. Yeah, the Banu Nadir, the Banu Qaynuqa' and the Banu Quraidha. These were the three tribes that were residing in uh, al Madina al Munawwarah at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many people think Medina was just Muslim, right? Medina was actually very, very diverse. Medina had Munafiqun, Medina had Mushrikun, Medina had Muslimun, Medina had Yahud, and Medina even had some Nasara as well, some Christians. Okay? Medina was very diverse. But subhanAllah, in that diversity, there was khayr for the Muslims. Why was there khayr for the Muslims? The Muslims established themselves despite the diversity. Whereas in Mecca, there was one main religion which was Mushrikun. Right? Mushrikun and shirk was the main religion in Mecca. Now when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa came, that didn't resonate with them. And as a result, you know, we know what happened, that they started oppressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the Muslims. So anyway, the Jews, they deep down, they knew that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is a true Prophet of Allah. They knew this. Why? Because it was mentioned in their books. As Allah mentions in the Quran, that يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ That they recognized the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as if they recognized one of their children. Right? This is how cl- clearly they recognized the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the descriptions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the Torah. And they used to read the descriptions. They knew that there is going to be a Prophet that is going to come at the end of time. That is going to be the final Prophet that is going to come from Mecca. However, their issue was what? They were hoping that he was from the children of who? Anyone know? Ishaq alayhi salam, right? Why? Because they were from the descendants of Ishaq alayhi salam. However, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his lineage is from the descendants of Ismail alayhi salam. So because of this, literally, this is the main reason why many of the Jews did not accept Islam, even though they recognized the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But it's also the reason why many of the Jews did accept Islam. Many of the rabbis did accept Islam. Like Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam, he was a rabbi. He was a knowledgeable Jew. He had knowledge of the descriptions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is why when he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he spoke to him and conversed with him, he accepted Islam. Okay, and we have other examples as well. So we had some Jews that accepted Islam when they saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But others, they knew that he was the messenger of Allah, but out of their arrogance and out of this, you can say, um, tribalism, they did not accept the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as the messenger of Allah, even though deep down they knew that he was the messenger of Allah. So this is why they wanted to seek the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so that they can go around and telling, tell everyone, that you oh, you look, you know, uh, the Prophet, he made dua for us. He made dua of mercy for us. So we're okay now. We, we've got a status now and we should be respected. Right? However, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never made dua for them. The only dua he made for them was dua, the dua of guidance. Yahdikumullahu wa yuslihu balakum. Okay, and this is what the Jews used to do at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moving on, وعن أبي سعيد الخضر رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
إذا تفاءب أحدكم فليمسك بيده على فيه فإن الشيطان يدخل رواه مسلم أبو سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه he says that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said when one of you yawns then let him withhold his yawn with his hand meaning let him place his hand upon his mouth for indeed shaytan he enters when one of you yawns now what does this mean that shaytan enters when one of you yawns the ulama have given different interpretations the most popular interpretation is that shaytan when one of you yawns shaytan entering means shaytan will now have an influence on you all right why does shaytan have an influence on you and what is the link between shaytan and yawning it is the link of laziness shaytan will use that laziness to now put waswasa in your mind that don't go for salah don't wake up for fajr don't go for isha it's too late in the summer yeah don't go for this salah it's too cold the laziness he's going to have an influence on you so this way is meant when the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that fa shaytana yadkhul that shaytan he enters when one of you yawns and this is why the Messenger of Allah, he encouraged that we cover our mouths when we yawn. And this is part of withholding our yawn. Now we'll move on, inshallah, to the next chapter. We'll study a few of the had- a hadith in the next chapter, and then inshallah we'll conclude. The next chapter is re- with regards to greeting. Yeah, musafaha, which is shaking hands. So, babu istihbab al musafahati in the liqa. The chapter with regards to the preferability or the recommendation of shaking hands when you meet someone. الوجهي, and when you meet someone, you meet someone with a cheerful face. The, the preferability of that. الصالح, kissing the hand of a pious individual. That's also going to be discussed. شفقةً, kissing uh, his child out of love. وَمُعَانَقَةِ الْقَادِمِ مِنْ سَفَرٍ And hugging the one who comes from a, from a journey وَكَرَاهِيَّةِ الْإِنْحِنَاءِ And the dislikeness of bowing when you, when you greet someone Now can you see, this is a, a kind of a more of an academic point Can you see how long this title is? It's a very long title isn't it? Right? Normally when you have a title of, a chapter title it's just a few words This is two lines, right? Very long title the reason behind it, I've mentioned this before, but just as a reminder, the reason behind it is because the, the muhaddithin, what they do in the, in the chapter titles in hadith, they summarize everything that is going to come in the, in the chapter. Right? So if you want to get a snapshot of all of the hadith that's going to come in this chapter, look at the title. Right? So we know now all of the hadith, there's going, there's going to be a hadith of musafaha, shaking hands, there's going to be a hadith of Bashashatul Waj, which is greeting people with a cheerful face. There's going to be a hadith talking about kissing the hand of a pious individual. There's going to be a hadith regarding kissing your children out of love. There's going to be a hadith regarding embracing someone when they come from a journey. And there's also going to be a hadith re- with regards to the prohibition of bowing when you greet someone. Okay, so this is a, a whole kind of summary of all of the hadith that are going to come in this chapter. The first hadith. عن أبي الخطاب قتادة قال قلت لأنس أكانت المصافحة في أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال نعم رواه البخاري أبو الخطاب who is known as قتادة he said to Anas that was shaking hands did it exist at the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and did it exist amongst the companions of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, yes, it existed. Now, from this we learn the legislation of musafaha, the legislation of shaking hands, that shaking hands is part of our sharia, and this is the evidence. The next hadith, وَعَنْ أَنَسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ لَمَّا جَاءَ أَهْلُ الْيَمَنِ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ أَهْلُ الْيَمَنِ وَهُمْ أَوَّلُ مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْمُصَافَحَةِ رواه أبو داود بإسناد صحيح أنس رضي الله عنه says that one day the people of Yemen came they came to Medina they came to meet the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said قد جاءكم أهل اليمن the people of Yemen have come to you the people of Yemen have come to you now the messenger of Allah he really loved Yemen and the people of Yemen you know one day the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم pointed towards Yemen and he said that 
true faith is over there. True faith is in Yemen. True faith is among the people of Yemen. And there are many ahadith talking about the virtues of the people of Yemen. In fact, there are certain hadith books wherein they have dedicated an entire chapter with regards to the virtues of the people of Asham and the virtues of the people of Yemen. Right? And this is another topic for another day. Anyway, he says that the people of Yemen have come to you. And he said, وَهُمْ أَوَّلُ مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْمُصَافَحَةِ They are the first people who introduced this culture of handshaking. Right? So we learn from this hadith that the first people that came with this greeting, especially in that vicinity, uh, the, in the Arabian Peninsula, the first people who came with this action of handshaking when greeting someone was the people of Yemen. When the Prophet ﷺ saw this in his time, he basically approved and he liked this practice, which is why it became part of the Sharia. And there are many things like this, many cultural practices that took place before the Prophet ﷺ, that the Prophet ﷺ approved when he came. And among them was handshaking. So when the Prophet ﷺ saw people shaking hands, especially the people of Yemen who came from Yemen, the Prophet ﷺ liked this. And as a result, it became part of the Sharia, which is why when we say Assalamu Alaikum, we accompany that Assalamu Alaikum with Musafaha. And this is very important. The Sunnah is that the handshaking is accompanied with the greeting of Salam. Right? You shouldn't just say, Oh, what's up, man? And just shake someone's hand. No, no, no. Assalamu Alaikum, and then you shake someone's hand. Okay? And this is what the Sunnah. We'll do one more hadith, inshallah. I can see uh, tiredness on people's face. So, inshallah, we'll end it after this hadith. This is actually a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa There is a whole chapter in Bukhari which talks about how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he used to take care of the people when giving lectures. Yeah? And he, he mentions that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would see tiredness on people's faces, people sleeping and people yawning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would stop his lecture straight away. So, inshallah... We'll, we'll, we'll uh, revive this sunnah today. So one more hadith. وعن البراء رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من مسلمين يلتقيان فيتصافحان إلا غفر لهما قبل أن يفترقا رواه أبو داود براء بن عازب رضي الله عنه he says that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said there are there are there's not a single Muslim that meets another Muslim. And thereafter they shake hands, except that their sins will be forgiven before they separate. Right? Meaning that when two people come and they meet each other, before they separate, their sins will be forgiven. Right? And there are many other ahadith to the similar effect. And this shows the virtues of shaking hands, which is why we should try to shake hands. I know COVID has made it a bit weird. You know, we, we try to avoid shaking hands. But, uh, you know, we need to um, take it with a pinch of salt, inshallah. And, uh, you know, use hand sanitizer if you want. Yeah, there we go. Got hand sanitizer here. Okay, if you're really paranoid about you know, spreading germs, etc. You see, there needs to be a, 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 some tawakkul as well. Okay, when you do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then inshallah nothing's going to happen to you. Okay, and this is something very important. Obviously, the benefit of Islam and the benefit of Muslims is we perform wudu all the time. Right? So we're always performing wudu. So when it comes to hygiene, no one can beat the Muslims. The Muslims are at the very top when it comes to hygiene. Okay? So we shouldn't worry too much about oh, you know, spreading germs, etc. Obviously, we should take some precaution, but it shouldn't stop us from shaking people's hands. You say, I'm not going to shake this person's hand because I might spread germs. Right? Or I might catch something off him. Right? Sickness is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so is the cure as well. Right? So we have tawakkul in Allah azza wa We shake the person's hand unless, obviously, the person has been diagnosed with that uh, a disease or he's got the flu or he's got COVID, whatever. Then obviously we take our precautions. But the default should be that we just live our lives how we used to live our lives before COVID, inshaAllah ta'ala. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grants us the ability to act upon all of these ahadith. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Yes. Uh, just then, in terms of the response to somebody who says uh, somebody sneezing and.